Hey, what's going on everyone with the Wyoming Game and Fish Department? I'm Chris Martin and you're watching Expo Live. Expo Live is a series of events streamed to our Facebook page and YouTube channel and also on wyomingexpo.com. Uh, and the events cover all things outdoors. So if this is the first event you're joining, welcome. And your owl knowledge is about to take flight because today we are joined by Jupiter, the great horned owl and Renee Shell, the information and education specialist out of the Lander region. Um, so with Jupiter being a live owl, you never know what you might see or hear. So uh, keep your eyes out and ears out for a hoot or uh, anything like that. And we will get started right away. So um, Renee, I guess, go ahead and introduce Jupiter and tell us a little bit about Jupiter's backstory. Great. Thank you so much, Chris. Yeah. I Again, my name is Renee. I'm here in the Lander region. Jupiter looks like he's about to take flight. So if he does that, give me a moment to get him back settled. I know that. I'll tell you in a minute how I know that he's about to take flight. And he gives me those clues. Yep. There he goes. Hold on, buddy. He gives me clues and we'll get into so much more about owls, but he always poops right before he takes flight. And we'll talk about why in a little bit. So my name's Renee. I'm here in the Lander region. This is Jupiter. He is an injured owl. You may have just seen that he actually is fully flighted, meaning he has all of his flight feathers. So his injury is not on a wing and that's pretty common for injured birds. Sometimes it is on a wing but he actually has retinal detachment in his eyes. And it took a while to discover that um, once he was found on the ground and he was, it was deemed that he was starving. It took a little while and he actually had to go to an ophthalmologist where they figured out that he has retinal detachment. He's not completely blind, but blind enough that he can't see well enough to hunt and survive in the wild. So we have had him here for 19 years. He um, could live up to 35 years old. That's that's you know pretty average for a great horned owl in captivity but we got him as an adult so we don't know how many years he lived before 19. but we've had him 19 years and he is a great educational ambassador for for all raptors so that's what he is he's a raptor and raptors are owls hawks eagles falcons all those things are in the raptor family and what that means is they hunt for their food. So another name for raptor would be bird of prey. So they hunt for their food. They have sharp beaks. You might be able to see his beak here. He's got his mouth a little bit open. They have sharp talons. And both of those things help them catch their prey. They have, owls have large heads with a kind of dish shaped profile for their head. And they have long wings, but well, yeah, I guess longer wings than a hawk. So sometimes you can tell in flight the difference between the two because owls will have a shorter body and longer wings if you just see them flying. And a hawk or an eagle will have shorter wings and a longer body. So a good way to tell the difference if they're flying. Another way that might be really easy is if you see one at night, it's probably an owl. Owls are nocturnal. Many of you may have known that. And that just means they're active at night. Lots of owls are also active at dawn and dusk. So you, that's a great time to see one because of course we see better at dawn and dusk. And so it's easier sometimes to spot them then. Jupiter is a great horned owl. He's not, great horns are not the largest owl we have in Wyoming, but they're the most common. They occur any kind of conifer, so treed habitats under 9,000 feet. So really most of Wyoming and the cool thing about great horned owls is you can find them in cities and you can find them out in the woods when you go camping. So lots of opportunities to see great horned owls. Um, I didn't say this, but feel free if you have any questions or comments, you can put them right in the chat. You don't have to wait for me to finish. I can just roll with it and Chris will read them off to me and then I can answer your questions as well. I'll go into adaptations and so Adaptations, it's just a big word for something really simple that every living organism has. And adaptations are just traits that help us survive in our environment. And wild animals, all I like to say every trait that they have, whether it's something you can see 
or a behavior, every trait that they have is for a reason. We might not as humans always understand what that reason is, but there's a good reason. So let's go through some of Jupiter's adaptations, some of the traits he has that help him survive and what they help him do. So one thing, and you can put this in the chat, I'll give you guys a little bit of time. How, how many degrees, so one circle is 360 degrees. How many degrees around can his head go? If it could go one full turn, that would be 360 degrees. A half a turn would be 180 degrees. So put it there in the comments and tell me how far around you think it can go. We'll get back to that. With his head, so if you feel that if you're at home and you're somewhere, you can feel the back of your spine, you can feel your vertebrae. You've got seven in your neck. Jupiter and other owls have 14. They have twice the number that we do. And that helps them turn their head. Does anybody put anything in the chat, Chris? I'm not seeing anything yet. Uh, they might not have hit this point of the live video. So we'll see. There's still some time. Uh, let us know yeah. what you think. Um, and, yeah, put yeah. it in there. So he can turn his head. I'll tell you, it's not all the way around. So it's not 360. And we'll, again, we'll get back to it. Put that in there if, if you want to take a guess at how many degrees in a circle around his head can go. Um, why that is, why do owls need to turn their head around like that? How, how is that an adaptation, right? Is it that they need to see behind them? Not so much. But what it is, is that their eyes have to be big. So, and I'll, it, this will make sense in just a minute. So they're nocturnal. We talked about that. When a nocturnal animal needs big eyes to gather as much light as they can so he can see and hunt at night. He uses his sight a lot for hunting at night. His eyes are so big and they need to be so big. They take up over half of his skull. Here's an owl skull. You can see these eye sockets. They're huge. His eye goes way back into here. Not a lot of room for the brain. Tiny little bird brain. Big eyes. His eyes are so big that he doesn't have room in his brain for muscles to move his eyes. So those rings you saw around his eyes are bones that hold his eyes in place. He can't move his eyes side to side like we can. He can't do that. So he has to be able to move his head 270 degrees around. I don't know if anybody got that, but if they did or if you were close, good job. So 270 degrees, that's three quarters of a circle around. And that's an adaptation for him for hunting, right? And also for safety. A great horned owl is super strong, but another great horned owl or a hawk or an eagle might definitely try to attack this guy. So he's got to keep an eye out. And right now he's kind of looking around, thinking about flying again. He's looking, where can I fly? He squats down a little bit like he's doing before he's going to take off. I'll see if I can get his attention. Or he might fly again and we'll get him back on here. Well, um, and Renee, we do have a question coming in. Great. Um, what is the range of uh, the great horned owl in the United States? So pretty much the entire United States, the lower 48, he is here. And in most states, Chris, he's the most common owl in that state. There's some southeastern states where the barred owl uh, might be kind of in competition for who's the, who's the most common. But in most of the whole United States, you could pretty much say the great horned owl is the most common across the US. Good question. He's still thinking about flying, but I'll, I'll give him a minute. He extended his wings. I don't know if you guys got a good look at those wings. Something that owls have. Something that owls have that differs a little bit from hawks is that they have silent flight. There you go, bud. Which is also an adaptation. Silent flight's an adaptation so that the little mouse that he's, you know, going to jump on can't hear him fly. And so what happens on this front edge of his wing, this leading edge, it has stiff bristles that stick out and kind of break the, the wind. He's panting. You see him? It's warm in here for him, right? He's fully feathered. He'll be okay. And then his feathers overlap and they're extra soft so that when they move against one another, they are completely silent when he flies. 
So you may have heard people talk about before, oh, I had an owl swoop at my head and I didn't even know it was there, you know, until it kind of got right above me. And that's because they're silent flyers. Jacqueline Wells is wondering how big is their wingspan? That's another great question. So a great horned owl, um, Jupiter's wingspan is probably about five and a half feet. And it really, a lot of it depends on the size of the bird. So it's gonna, it's going to adjust to, to that. So the smaller the sized owl, the smaller the wingspan for that owl, but it's about twice the length of the bird is the wingspan's about twice that. Um, Jupiter, I keep referring to him as a male. We think he's a male because he's on the smaller side for a great horned owl. And in all raptors, the males are smaller than the females. So really neat kind of quiz question there. You can ask your friends because in a lot of other mammals and even a lot of other birds, the males are bigger, right? Or maybe more colorful, um, but not for raptors. The males are smaller and scientists aren't really sure why. Maybe you guys have a guess as to why. Scientists aren't real sure. They have some theories, but they're not exactly sure. If you see, um, and often you will see, two raptors in a tree together, especially this time of year, because right now, great horns have young in their nest. So you'll see, um, and it's about the time of year where they're both male and female will be hunting for the young. So you might see them together. You can actually see the difference. The female is about one whole head size bigger than the male. So you can impress your friends, family, parents, and, and tell them which is the male and which is the female just by size. Something else about Jupiter, he has these tufts. So they're called great horned owl, right? Well, probably most of you know these aren't horns. That's how he got his name, but they're not horns. Um, they're not even ears. They're just feathers. And those feathers, you know, again, scientists have some theories about the feathers. One is that it helps him look bigger, right? So if he needs to defend the nest or defend himself, he'll look bigger with those tufts up. Another is... He spends a lot of time in trees and trees have leaves and twigs that stick out. So those just help him camouflage. They kind of break up the shape of his otherwise round head. So where are his ears? That is a really good question because they're not up here. Everybody thinks they're up here. His ears, I'll bring him closer. You won't see them exactly. You'll have to use your imagination. So his ears, this line on his head that you can see, this dark line, if I were to pull the feathers apart, I won't because he wouldn't like it. If I pull those feathers apart, you would see an opening like our ear, not the outside. This is what catches our sound. He doesn't have this. He's got something else to catch the sound, but you'd see the opening. I have a picture. This, imagine this is the side of his head. That's what the ear opening looks like. Owls have one on each side, but they're not symmetrical. Our ears are symmetrical, or they're supposed to be. Mine are a little crooked. Owls are really crooked. So one ear is like way down here, and one ear is way up here. And that helps them. Sound comes in in the nighttime at different rates to each ear, and that helps them create a 3D image of their surroundings. And if there's something making noise out there in the leaves, they can find it by moving their head around and kind of honing in and, and locating their prey. And Renee, that actually relates to Christopher Nielsen's uh, question. He's on YouTube and he's asking what types of animals do great horned owls eat? So what are they listening for? Yeah, I was gonna ask you guys, what do you think? Stick it in the comments, but I'll put some things out there too. So for the most part, owls eat things relative to their body size. However, there are some exceptions. So great gray owls are actually the biggest owl we have in Wyoming but they're not very strong. So a great gray owl would be about this much bigger than Jupiter, but the biggest thing they eat would be a tiny mouse because they just don't have the body strength. Jupiter is about as almost as strong as a bald eagle. He has super duper strong grip strength. So great horns are the strongest owl that we have. So he can eat things like skunks, your house cat, so keep your cats in at night, um, snakes, He'll, he'll eat mice, but he'd probably rather get the bunny rabbit or the squirrel or even other birds, sometimes other owls. Um, 
you name it, and Jupiter can probably eat it. If it gets too big, you know, if, if it gets um, over three, four, five pounds, he probably is going to have a hard time taking off with it. So those are the main things he eats. And then something really interesting happens after he eats. So he will use his beak and his talons and he'll grab onto the prey and he'll just kind of have to rip it apart and he'll swallow big chunks whole. And in those chunks will be feathers or fur or bones. All those kinds of things are in there. He has to just swallow the whole thing, but his body can't digest the fur and the feather and the bones. So it separates it out. Down goes the meat and it stays up here, all the fur and the feather and the bones, and it compacts into what's called a pellet. And twice a day, he'll cough up that pellet. And I'll show you, I have one here that you can see. And if you look at, look closely, you can see that there's bones in there. There's hair in there. So it's really fun to find these. You can order uh, pellets online sometimes from uh, science catalogs and supply catalogs and dissect them. And sometimes there'll be entire skulls of mice in there. So it's really neat to see. So that's one adaptation they have. He might fly again. One adaptation they have um, to be able to get all that meat sorted out, right? There you go. He's giving you quite a show. You're getting to really see that five and a half foot wingspan, right? He has, as you can imagine with COVID, we haven't been to a lot of schools this year. Normally we go to lots of schools and events. And so he is, he's a little bit out of practice, but he's doing a good job. Um, so the pellets, that's what they eat. Yeah, you can see him panting. And that's kind of like a dog when they lose heat, he does the same thing, right? He has this tiny little tongue inside his beak and it's moving back and forth. And then the feathers right here, these white feathers are moving back and forth and he's cooling himself off that way. I wanna get back to his, oh, go ahead. Did you have a question? We do have a few more questions. Right. Um, so do great horned owls typically utilize the same nest sites year after year? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. So a little bit about nests. The majority of owls do not build their own nest. So they, uh, a few owls will nest in cavities. Sometimes great horned owls will nest in, and that's just like a hole in a tree. Often they will use the nest that another bird made. They don't use it at the same time, so it works out really well. So commonly great horned owls might use a magpie nest and the magpie will build it during the summer. And then the great horned owl will actually use it that next winter. So, but typically, uh, typically it's the same range. So they may come back to say a park. We have one here in Lander in City Park. They've nested here, this pair for years and years and years. They're not always in the same tree, but they're usually always somewhere in the park. So they have a range that they establish and somewhere within there. But if you have um, owls that come to your house and you see a pair of owls every year, you can be pretty sure those are the same owls coming back year after year. Good question. Great. Yeah, great question, Ryan, and thanks for tuning in on Facebook. We have uh, another question on YouTube from Nicole. She's asking, how do you feed Jupiter? Oh, yeah, great question. So because he can't hunt on his own, we don't put any live animals in with him. He lives in like um, an aviary where he can fly between perches, and we have a feeding platform. And on that feeding platform, I every day I cut up hearts. Um, big game hearts, and I leave it there for him. So we have hunters who donate hearts of the animals that they don't want to eat. Some people like to eat the heart, but if they don't, they'll bring it here to us and they donate it. And that's what he eats. Um, heart is a muscle, just like all the other muscles in our body. And it's got tons of vitamins for him. I also sprinkle on vitamins and minerals for him every day. Good question. Nice. And uh, Amy asks, uh, how many eggs do they lay at a time? Yeah, so um, one egg at a time, but about four, for a great horned owl, maybe up to four eggs that year. But the female owl, it may take her 24 to 48 to 72 hours. So it may take her a few days between laying each egg. So she'll lay an egg and then she may wait a few days and lay another egg up to about four times for great horned owls. Some owls will lay up to 14 eggs. So it really depends on the species. 
And then Next we'll question. do two more um, and then continue on. But Crystal asks, uh, that there are a lot of rattlesnakes in Wyoming um, and two species. Uh, will the venom kill uh, Jupiter or great horns? Yeah, the venom probably would kill him. He only weighs about two and a half pounds. So he looks bigger than that because he's got all these feathers. His bones are hollow, um, but yes, they probably will. So he may have learned already owls through time not to mess with the snakes that have rattles, or they may have learned exactly where they need to pick up that snake if they're gonna do it. Yeah, good question. All right, and then Chris on YouTube again is asking uh, how big they are when they are born. Oh, that's a great question. So let me show you the egg and that will, you'll can then start to imagine how big they are when they're born. This is a great horned owl egg, about the size of a chicken egg with the ends kind of rounded off. Um, it's not a real egg, but it's a replica of an egg. So really they are about that size and color. Smaller owls obviously have smaller eggs. We have four inch owls, so they're gonna have teeny tiny eggs. Um, so great horned owls are about the size of a chick that you might see at the, front, the feed store or that maybe you have raised. They're completely white and fluffy. Their eyes aren't open yet, so they take a few days to open their eyes. About a month after hatching, um, the owls, the great horned owls are ready to be eating on their own and mom and dad can be bringing back bigger pieces of meat. When they're tiny, they tiny little pieces of meat that they kind of almost chew up for them and then give it to them. So good question. Tiny birds when they're born. All right, Yen, uh, we'll continue on. It looks like we addressed most of the questions, but keep them coming, folks. Uh, thanks for uh, dropping them in the, the chat, and we'll get to more later on. Yeah, thank you, Chris. So let's keep talking some. Their face is so important. So we talked a little bit about their ears, and we have this part of our ear that catches the sound waves. So sound waves just float through the air, and they come to us and we, we catch them on our ear and they go, they go into our ear, right? So he doesn't have these big catch, catches here. So what owls have is that flat face, that dish-shaped face. And you can see his really kind of outlined. Let's see if I can get him closer. Outlined and the feathers go from the center of his face back towards his ears on either side. The feathers are funneling back. And so what happens for owls is, <laughs> Thanks, buddy. That was so cool. I hope you guys got to hear that. Maybe he'll do it again. Sometimes he does it in multiples. So the sound hits his face, those sound waves, and floats on the, the feathers back to those ear holes. Super cool. He's been doing that a lot lately for our education program. So we're really pleased when he shares that part of himself. Um, he also had, we talked a little bit about his eyes, kind of last thing about his eyes. You've noticed they're yellow. Owls in North America have either yellow or brown colored eyes. Um, you may have seen in the movies, owls with orange eyes, and those are in Europe, but there are owls with orange eyes. Um, he has three eyelids. So we as humans, we just really have one, this top one, because it's movable. Uh, this bottom skin doesn't count because we can't move it. He has three separate lids he can move. So he's got the top one that he can blink with like us and keep his eyes moist. He has a bottom eyelid that can move. And when he sleeps, the bottom eyelid comes about halfway up and it meets the top eyelid and that's how he rests. Then he has a clear eyelid with a big name, nictitating membrane, and it's clear and it swipes across his eye. Um, and it's almost like a pair of goggles. So I bet you can even start to imagine why he might need these goggles. He doesn't swim. Alligators and river otters also have this membrane. They swim, that makes sense. He doesn't swim, but he dives really fast through the air. So if you've ever rid ridden on a motorcycle or ridden downhill on a bike really fast and you get a bug in your eye, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You would wish you had a pair of goggles. So he's kind of got this pair of goggles to help protect his eyes. Another adaptation. We did talk some about his feet and his talons. Um, I will hold up this one here because it's a little easier to see than his. So owls and hawks differ a little bit in their feet. They do have four toes. Owls and hawks both have four toes. 
but owls have a reversible toe. So when they're perched, like he is on my hand, he'll keep two toes in the front and two toes in the back. When he's going hunting, he flips that back toe around to the front and he'll have three in the front and one in the back. And that's a stronger kind of grip for him to hold on to prey. So it's kind of weird. I mean, it would be like if we could take our pinky toe and flip it around to our heel when that was more convenient for balance and then flip it back to the front. Um, so that's a unique adaptation that owls have over hawks. Any more questions out there, Chris? How's it looking? Yeah, we have a few different questions. It looks like there's a few folks who want to know how fast and how far um, great horned owls can fly. Yeah, that's a great question too. So great horned owls, they aren't big migrators, so they don't need to fly great distances, you know, hundreds of miles at a time. They stick pretty close to their home ranges. They may change some in elevation throughout the year. If they nest up in the forest, they might come down kind of into warmer areas. So um, how far they can fly at a time? I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe somebody wants to look that up. Um, it probably depends a lot on how much they've eaten, but how fast they can fly. They can fly, you know, at a, at a dive, probably about 30, 35 miles per hour um, when they're in a fast dive. If you ever noticed, and you know, this is something common that people will sometimes see, um, a raptor on the side of the road or on the ground in an area that it seems odd, like don't they want to take off? Which he might do again in a minute. <laughs> um, often if they eat a big meal, if they catch something like, let's say he catches a rabbit and it's too big for him to carry away, he'll sit there and eat it and he'll get so full he actually can't physically lift off until he digests a little bit. So sometimes that happens. Too. Yeah, and then uh, I know you spoke to this a little bit at the beginning, but uh, what is the lifespan of great horned owls? Yeah, great question. So about 35 years. And what's interesting in birds of prey, and, and I would say 35 years, that's in captivity. So the wild has so many more dangers that a 35 year old owl would be really ancient in the wild. Um, but again, with birds of prey, the larger they are, the longer they can live. So eagles can live up to 45, 50 years in captivity. It's been documented. Um, and then smaller owls and kestrels would be more like 15, 18, 20 years. So he's right in that mid range of about 35 years. We've had him for 19. Um, we don't know how old he was when we got him. So we'll see. I'm hoping he lives a lot longer. And how much food can they eat at a time? So they can really, they're made to gorge themselves if they need to. Um, I don't know in one sitting, but I know if you compared it to us, how much he would have to eat in a day. So if it were an average human, he, um, I would eat, if I were an owl, about the size of a small car tire every day. So, you know, take that down to his size. Um, that's a lot. I don't know where he fits at all. <laughs> They probably have real quick metabolisms and they're moving everything through pretty quickly and converting it to energy for flight. Well, thanks for asking that question, Corrine. Uh, Corrine's on YouTube and we have another um, another couple questions from YouTube. Uh, what would be a predator for an owl? Victoria wants to know. Yeah, so predators for owls, again, the smaller owls can get preyed on by a lot of larger hawks or owls. For a great horn, he's top of the top of his food system for owls. So something that's going to prey on him could be another great horned owl um, or eagles. So that's kind of it. Um, the thing that great horned owls have to worry about more than anything else probably is getting hit by a car. Um, so you sometimes they'll fly across the roadway at night and that often ends up getting them more than anything. And Retta wants to know, how is it possible to turn the head so far? <laughs> so 270 degrees is a lot. I know, it's amazing. They have twice as many vertebrae in their neck. So they've got 14 vertebrae and we have seven. So if you just imagine how many more turn points there are, he can get, I mean, you could, as humans, we could get close to 180, but he can just go that little bit further because he's got twice as many vertebrae. 
Great question. Here's a good one from Amber. Um, obviously, Jupiter doesn't hang out there all day. So where does Jupiter live when he's yeah. at the office? That's a great question. He doesn't live inside our office building. He has an aviary outside and it has room for him to fly between some perches. He has uh, screened windows um, because he is fully feathered. You can see he's kind of warm in here. So he really enjoys, you know, feeling the mist of the rain or the snow. And I think he probably also hears the great horns out there um, that live out there as well, the wild ones. So yeah, good question outside in his aviary. And Danielle asks, can Jupiter catch prey in water? Um, great horned owls aren't very good at that. That's not their first preference. He'd probably be pretty desperate. There are owls, uh, fish owls that live up in um, kind of Northern Europe. So a little bit more arctic -y climates that are very good at catching fish out of the water. Yes. Nice. And we'll go for a few more minutes. Um, and keep dropping your questions in the chat. It looks like we have quite a few uh, folks who have joined us recently. So uh, let us know where you're tuning in from. It's always fun to hear where folks are from. Um, so let us know. And Renee, I guess, are there any other uh, facts that we want to share in these last few minutes? Yeah, um, that's a great question, Chris. Just that you know his adaptations are truly amazing and if you think of wild animals in general you start to really i just think it's neat to start to think about why they do certain things or why they have certain things um one thing i like about owls is that right now this is a great time of year to be listening for them so they all should have babies in the nest just about all of them um, the eggs have hatched and depending on how old the babies are, they're gonna soon start kind of limbing, which means getting out onto limbs. Um, you may find some on the ground, and if you do, please call your local game and fish. Sometimes the babies end up down and they can't get back up in the tree, so we can help with that. Um, and this is just a neat time of year to kind of take a walk and listen, listen for owls at that dusk time. Um, that Reminds me of a question I think we missed earlier, but uh, someone was wanting to know, I think it was Chris, if um, Jupiter was aggressive when we first found him. Great question. He um, went straight to Ironside Bird Rescue in Cody. So they would have been the first ones. He was actually found um, in a meadow outside of Jackson. They got him to Cody to do that rehabilitation work. Susan Ahalt is up there and she worked with him for quite a while determining what was wrong. So my guess is that, yes, he probably would have been really angry and aggressive. Um, by the time we got him, he had calmed down some, but it's taken him a long time to learn and you know, to trust us um, because he was a wild bird. And this, even though he's been with us 19 years, I still tell everyone, like, he's still new to this. Um, he's still learning to trust us humans. So um, for a great horned owl, he's actually pretty calm. I've worked with a lot of educational birds and great horns have a reputation for being grumpy, but he's not, he's not a grumpy one, so. All right, and um, Randy wants to know what time of the year do they mate? Yeah, so they start, you can start hearing the males calling in the late fall, early winter. And it's really neat if you do have, if you do hear calls, owl, the males are deeper than the females. So you can listen really closely to a pair calling back and forth and try to hear which one's male and female. So that's kind of happening fall into winter. They're really pairing up and then finding a nest. Again, most of them don't build a nest. So locating a nest um, in the winter and then they're laying eggs depending on the species. Uh, January, February, um, March is pushing it for some, but mostly laying eggs January, February and then hatching kind of February through early April. And then, um... Kareen is with Southside Elementary in Powell, so <laughs> welcome, uh, Kareen, in your class. Um, but how long do great horned owls stay with their mothers? Oh, great question, you guys. So right now, great horned owls are probably, you know, depending on the elevation, probably between two and four weeks old. They're learning how to eat on their own here pretty soon. Another two to four weeks, and they'll be flying on their own. So about six to eight weeks, they'll be really flying on their own. They'll stay with mom and dad through the summer. 
maybe into the fall a little bit while they really teach them how to hunt. Then come winter, um, they're, they're gonna start to separate. It wouldn't be uncommon if they maybe stayed together, but certainly by the next mating season, they're gonna be completely on their own. Yeah, great question. So less than a year with mom and dad. Nice. And um, looks like we, I guess another question, do you know how many times their heart beats per minute? I don't. If somebody looks that up, send it to me because I'll keep it in my note of questions we get. Yeah, that's a great question, Chris, and we'll uh, reply to that here in a bit. Um, but yeah, looks like we have folks from all over. We have uh, Ramona from High Desert, California. We have um, a class in Powell, Idaho, I saw. Uh, thanks for tuning in, Terry. Um, and yeah, um, I think we're towards the end. Um, but I, Kevin says he hunts pronghorn around Gillette. So Kevin, uh, you'll want to be sure to tune into one of our events that we have coming up on Saturday, where we talk about application tips and tricks. And this is just one of many events. Uh, this is the fifth of 14 events. So we have nine more Expo Live events coming up um, today, tomorrow, mm -hmm. and Saturday. So keep an eye out for those. Uh, you can watch the events that have been completed on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel. So if you miss any, don't worry, you can still catch them. Um, but uh, we'll drop a survey here in the chat. And so if you have the time, please fill that out. We're always interested in feedback. Um, and overall, we just want to say thank you very much for tuning in. Um, we hope you have a great rest of the day. And if you have time, come back for uh, trivia at 7 p.m. So you can test your knowledge and impress everyone with how much you know about Wyoming's wildlife. And we have a, uh, other categories as well. So it will should be fun for everyone. Tune in at 7. And thanks again for watching. Take care.